Over the last few days, I've been studying John chapter 8, and this is such an action-packed chapter, but the Lord has really been ministering to me through this, and I wanted to share it with you guys today in this video and talk about some of the markers or proof that you are the true disciples of Jesus and what He's sharing with some of the naysayers and Pharisees that are coming against Him and attacking Him at this time in His ministry when spiritual warfare is really ramping up. The jealousy, the, the mocking, the scoff, has evolved into now. They're full-blown trying to set him up. They're trying to arrest him. They're looking for a way to put him between a rock and a hard place, if you will. They're looking for a way to shut him down before more people believe because this movement is gaining traction. This Jesus is making waves and they hate it and it's stirring up that religious spirit in them and they are trying to shut it down at all costs. Now, looking in verse 31, he says, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Looking at the context of this, we have a lot that has just taken place. The woman caught in adultery, which was an entire setup, another thing designed to get Jesus stuck between a rock and a hard place, designed to catch him, designed to get something on him so that they could lawfully arrest him. Then we have this whole conversation conversation taking place where they're coming against Jesus's identity. If you'll remember Luke chapter, chapter 4 and the temptation of Jesus by Satan in the wilderness, the first thing Satan attacks is the identity of Jesus. This is a plan. This is a scheme. This is one of the enemy's tools that he will use throughout the ministry of Jesus to try and bring him down as they will attack his identity. So Jesus is going back and forth saying, I'm from the Father. I am the light of the world. I came from the Father. I only act according to what the Father tells me to say, what the Father tells me to do. He's the one that sent me. He's the one I'm trying to please. He's the one I'm trying to glorify and all of this, right? So a few of them believed after this back and forth. So he says to them, if, conditional statement, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. See, often we we take this scripture and we quote it out of context. You've heard this said many times, just thrown out there, and you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. But this is a part of a conditional statement of abiding in the words of Jesus. If you abide in my word, then, which we can place here, you are truly my disciples, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And many commentators do agree with that interpretation. This is not just out of my own mind, but that is what Jesus is saying here. There is a condition to knowing the truth and the truth setting us free and to being a true disciple of Christ. But then the naysayers or some of the Pharisees or some of the Jews that didn't believe say, we are the offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever, but the son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are the offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I've seen with my father and you do what you've heard from your father. So Jesus makes a distinction in whose father, who is of whose father. Okay. But this is significant. My words find no place in you. And you'll find several times in this chapter, Jesus puts emphasis on abiding in his word, the power of his word, staying in his word. And one of the things my words find no place in you is a marker of those who have another father. Who is that father? Well, very clear right there. You are of your father, the devil. He's telling them, because my words find no place in you, because you want to kill me, because my words don't bear witness with you, we've already been through this identity thing, because you don't believe I came from the father. And here they're about to say, well, we're of Abraham which Jesus rebukes as well. He says, if you're of Abraham, then you would do what Abraham did. But you're, here you are again trying to kill me. Abraham wouldn't have tried to kill me at all. You're doing the works your father did. Which who's he talking about? He's talking about Satan. 
Then they said to him, well, we're not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. So now they're trying to claim that they are children of God, just like Jesus was. But he fires back and says, if God were your father, you would love me for I came from God and I am here. I came not on my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. Do you see the theme Jesus is laying out here? You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me which one of you convicts me of sin if i tell you the truth why do you not believe me whoever is of god hears the words of god the reason why you do not hear them is because you're not of god so how do we know if we're of god we hear the word of god it bears witness with us we abide in the word and then they respond they said are we not right in saying that you are a samaritan and you have a demon so what do they do They don't have a comeback for any of this, so they start saying, well, you have a demon. When all else fails, just say, you have a demon. That's what the religious spirit does. The religious spirit gets backed into a corner. It doesn't know what to do. They start feeling stupid. Their pride starts getting hurt. They're not of the Lord. They're of another spirit. Jesus makes it very clear, your father is the devil. So what do they have left in the bag to throw out and try and convince others around him that he is crazy? Well, you're the one with the demon here. Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Here we are again with keeping his word. The Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he'll never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died and all the prophets who have died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Or who do you think you are, Jesus? And he says, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you don't know him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. He's saying, Abraham's on my side of the fence, y'all. Abraham's on my team. Abraham would not agree with you in anything that you're doing. So your claims are false. The spirit within you is not the spirit of God because I am the spirit of God and you are not of me. You are not of the same spirit. And he's saying the evidence that I am of God is that I keep his word. So the Jews said to him, you're not yet 50 years old and you've seen Abraham. And Jesus said to them, one of the most famous lines in the Bible, truly, truly, I say to you before Abraham was, I am mic drop moment. Absolutely infuriated them. They picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Y'all, if you look at this, in my other version of this app on my iPad, I can highlight all of the times that Jesus says, if you abide in my word and talking about keeping the word of God. And it's all throughout this whole chapter. That is his comeback. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Jesus is driving the fact home in this dispute with them. Notice what's happening here. One side is saying, I am of God. And then Jesus is saying, no, I'm from the Father. He sent me. And they're saying, well, yeah, well, we're from God too. So for those that are on the outside looking in, you know, this guy, Jesus shows up claiming to be the son of God and people either believe or they don't believe and they're faced with this very clutch decision in their life. Am I going to believe or am I not going to believe? And Jesus is saying the only proof, the only evidence of one who truly is from God and who truly believes and who is a true disciple of God does what? You abide in his word. You keep 
his word. Matthew chapter 7, remember verse 24, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The book of James says not to just be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. John 14, 21, whoever has my commandments and keeps them or obeys them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. First John 3, 22 says, and whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is the commandment that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us in John 14 and 15 and 16. He talks about that. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit he has given us. So first off, the Holy Spirit gives us that assurance of faith. That is one of the roles of the Holy Spirit. But what does it mean to abide in his word? Jesus says this is also a fruit of those that are his, those that truly belong to him, those that are truly his disciples. We will abide or we will keep his word or we will obey his word. Like it says in so many other places in scripture, it's to live in that place. We put away our old self and we walk in the new man. We've received that grace by faith, not of works, so that no one can boast. And if that justification has truly taken place, there will be evident works. There will be fruit in our life that will say, hey, I'm a disciple of Christ. And one of those is abiding in his word and keeping his word. I love how Paul says it in Romans 13, 14, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. We're putting all of that behind us and we're keeping the words of our Savior. The pursuit is Jesus. He warns us all over scripture. You'll know those that are truly mine because they keep my commandments. The ones that love me, they keep my commandments. The ones that care for me, they obey you are my friends if you do what I command you. It's not just hearing, but it's doing. Remember, James says, don't be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. There's so many online and in churches around the world teaching others to pursue so many other things than the person of Jesus, than obedience. And you want to know why? Because it's not a popular message. Dying to ourself, denying ourselves daily, picking up our cross and following Jesus is not a popular message. Most people don't want to hear that. We want to hear how spiritual we can be and the things that we can do in the spirit. We want to hear about how God wants to give us health, wealth, and success and how to manifest our reality. How can I have the following, the job, the money, the life that I've always wanted and be a Christian? too. This is amazing. Thank you, Jesus. And then I get to go to heaven after this. Why wouldn't I want that life? Do you understand there's a dangling carrot out there and Jesus is saying my true disciples are the one that read this word and do what it says that obey me. The Holy Spirit gives us that assurance of faith. We care about what he cares about. We love what he loves. We hate what he hates and we do what he says to do. These are my true disciples. There's so many out there arguing, I'm of God. No, I'm of God. I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos and just bickering back and forth, leaving so many people confused and like, well, how do I know who's right and who to follow and what to do? My friend, get in the word, get in the scripture, spend time in the secret place, pursue the person of Jesus, do what he says, let the Holy Spirit be that assurance of faith and the evidence of that justification that's taken place inside of you and you will never be led astray. If you abide in my word, 
you are truly my disciple. Those words, abide in my word, have just been resonating in my spirit. I've been praying that for us as believers and over the body of Christ. And I just ask that you would join me in that prayer. But hey, if you want to join Glasshouse TV and support what we are doing financially on a monthly basis, you can do that by heading over to our Patreon page. It's free to sign up and join the page if you don't want to contribute at this time. Totally fine. But I post little things over there that I won't be posting here on YouTube. But nonetheless, if you're not subscribed to the channel, we would love to have you. I would surely appreciate it and ask that you hit the like button. That's the thumbs up button. And that tells YouTube to send this video out to more people. But thank you so much for spending your time here watching and I will see you in the next one.